Welcome back, Royal Priesthood family, to All Things Possible, prophetic brand with yours truly, Prophetess Sika Esther Grace. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise on this day. We invite you in. We invite your presence in, O oh Lord. We ask that you go before us. Make every crooked place straight and every rough place smooth in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that your blessing be upon us afresh today. The blessing that make it rich and add no sorrow. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you shield us and protect us. Open up our hearts and mind so that we can receive today's message and apply it accordingly. We ask that you anoint us afresh and we ask that you continue to enable us to grow in the things of you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Holy Spirit, welcome. Come on in. I decrease so that you may increase. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that my royal priesthood family had a wonderful weekend. I pray that um you got everything you need to do. Uh, a comp you was able to do everything you needed to do this week weekend and accomplish glory be to God I had a great weekend a great weekend so you see the title of today's message and I want to highlight some things before we go directly into the word of the Lord in my prayer time over the weekend the Lord was dealing with me about the power of prayer and how a lot of believers believe it or not a lot of believers don't pray a lot of believers don't pray. A lot of believers don't believe in prayer. And some believers only pray when they're in trouble. So the Lord just summons my heart to do a series this week on, um, in other words, Jesus teach us how to pray or teach us about prayer. So we're going to take this foundational um, series from Matthew 6, starting at verses 5 through 14 or maybe 15, but each day the Lord is going to allow me to highlight a section. And today he's dealing with, as you can see, the title of today's message. Um, he's dealing with the do's and don'ts of prayer. So and if you all do pray, which I know I got some royal priesthood family members that pray and intercede because you all pray and intercede for me. I feel your prayers all the time and I'm so grateful. But we have a lot of people that's going to be tuning in. And the Lord reminded me that these messages are not just for now, but they're for, for later. They're futuristic. So they're going to be new family members that are going to come on and they're going to be blessed by the word of the Lord and Whatever God has allowed me to release over the airways, glory be to God, they're going to be strengthened by it. So if I have royal priesthood family that say, well, you know, this message don't apply to me today. I encourage you to still listen because faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. I have read the model prayer, as we call it, the Lord's prayer. I don't know how many times. And each time I read it, I find something new, a new revelation, a new insight. So I just want you to be an intercession for those that we believe God is going to ignite their fire back to pray. And I'm not just saying praying when they need something, but they're going to be their love language is going to become their prayer language towards the father, you know? And so we're going to get right on into the word of God. I am excited about today's message. This is one of my favorite things to do. I love prayer. I love intercession. I have seen what prayer can do. Prayer can truly move mountains. It can move mountains. Glory be to God. So if you will turn with me to Matthew six verses five through eight. And I'm going to actually read it from the New King James Version this time. And the theme for this whole entire um, chapter is Jesus teaches about prayer. Glory be to God. And we know that he was talking to his disciples, but we also know that he's very well talking to us today as believers. We're going to bring it into today's terminology. And when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. And we're going to bring it into today's time, churches or temple and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. 
And when you pray, do not use vain repetitious as the heathens do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And I want to say, uh, you know, I want to highlight this last portion for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And a lot of Christians, I've heard them say this with my own ears. I don't need to ask God. God already know what I stand in need of, but you're misinterpreting that scripture. It's saying your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So that means, although he know what you have need of, you still have to open your mouth and ask him in the name of Jesus, according to his will and his way. See, Jesus taught the people through sermons, illustrations, and parables. Through his teaching, he, sh he showed the true ingredients of faith and how to guard against a fruitless and hypocritical life. Jesus teaches, shows us to prepare life in his eternal kingdom by living and praying properly um, for right now. In this lifetime, Jesus lived about, you know, Jesus lived what he, he taught about. He, he didn't just teach it and didn't live it. And we too, as his followers, must practice what we preach. Prayer. Let's define prayer. Communication with God. As believers, we must quickly recognize, then apply that our dependency is solely upon God, our creator. Yet we have every reason to express our gratitude for God's blessing. Still, we have to have far more reasons to respond to God than this. Effective prayer must be a scriptural, informed response of individuals saved by grace to the living God who can hear and answer on the basis of Christ's payment of the penalty that sinners deserve. In other words, what are you saying, prophetess? I am saying that your, your prayers, in order for your prayers to be effective, you must make sure that you are praying the word of God. You're praying the will of God. If your prayers are non-effective, then I guarantee you, you're not doing this principle that the Lord has encouraged us to do. He has encouraged us to pray scriptural based prayers. Glory be to God, according to God's will and according to his way. God will only respond to his word. He's only responsible for his word. His word will not return to him void, but it will set out and accomplish the very thing it needs to do. He's only obligated to perform his word. A confident prayer life is built on the cornerstone of Christ's work and words as shown by the prophets, apostles, and 12 disciples in the Bible. Matthew 6, 5, and 9, which we just read, which is the foundational scriptures for today's teaching. Overall, some people, much like today, especially religious leaders, wanted to be seen as holy and public prayers was one of the ways to get their attention or put their attention on them. And a lot of us have that. Uh, we, we, we see those type of people within the body of Christ and we call them attention seekers. Remember, today's message is the do's and don'ts of prayer. And Jesus saw this through their self-righteous acts. And in other words, they had a form of godliness yet denying the power, which is God, the source thereof. However, Jesus taught now and he's yet teaching through me that the essence of, of, of prayer is not for public style, but private communication with God. There is a place and that there is a time for public prayer, but to pray only where others will notice you indicates that you, your real audience is not God, it's you. As I said, we call these people within the body of Christ attention seekers. Therefore, repeating the same words over and over like a magic incantation is not is not the way that we should go. It's not the way that uh, you're going to think that God is going to hear your prayer. And, you know, you got some people who say things over and over and over again. And we call this prayerlessness. We call these words fruit fruitless. 
fruitlessness. We call these words having no meaning, no substance. You just saying it over and over and over again, thinking that for some reason or another that you're being effective, thinking for some reason or another that you're being powerful, but you're not. Cause Jesus is saying to his disciples, as he's saying to us today, this is no way of uh, ensuring that God will hear your prayer. However, Jesus did say, that it's not wrong to come to God many times with the same request. In other words, if you prayed about a situation in your home one time and you decide or you felt you feel led, you know, led of the spirit to pray about that situation again. Jesus is saying there's nothing wrong with you uh, praying the same request over and over. Um, you know, we know that we have to be persistent in some prayers and some prayers take a little bit more work than others. So Jesus is not condemning us for doing that. It's just that he's making sure that when you do come, that your prayers have meaning and have substance. That's why he encouraged the disciples to pray scripture based. He just, he, he encourages us as believers today to get in the word of God and pray the word, you know, because the word has substance. The word has power. Glory be to God. Jesus also encourages persistent prayers. As I said before, yet he condemns the shallow, listen to that word, shallow repetition of words that are offered with a, uh, that is not offered with a sincere heart. What what makes the word shallow, what makes the word null and void, what makes the word fruitless is because your heart and your posture in prayer is, is not from a sincere stance. Your, your heart is not sincere about that matter. You're just doing it just to be doing it. You ever, you know, had somebody just to come into your midst and you know, you can feel that they're not authentic. You can feel that they're not sincere about a thing. They just saying it because it sounds good or they just saying it because it's popular. But this is what Jesus is saying. You got to make sure that your posture is from a sincere place so that your words can be heard to the father in heaven. See, royal priesthood family, we can never pray too much. If our prayers are honest and sincere, I encourage you all today, those that are truly struggling with consistent prayer, with struggling with your prayer life, what even struggling with do God even answers prayers anymore? He may did that back in the Old Testament. He may did that back in the New Testament, but I'm talking about today. Do he answer prayers? And for, you know, for those of you all that are struggling with that, this message is for you today because it is, it is my heart's desire and it is my prayer that the Holy Spirit ignite your faith again, that you begin to pray from a posture that's scripture based, that you begin to pray from a posture that is sincere, that it's nothing wrong with you asking God to do something. But I, as I said in my message before, I want you to have an open heart and open mind to say, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but your will be done. So I encourage you today, those that are truly struggling, that you, before you get ready to go before the father in prayer, make sure your prayer is meaningful. Make sure it's not selfish. Make sure it's not self-centered. Make sure it's coming from a place of purity, honesty, and a sincere place. And I guarantee once you do that, the Lord will answer your prayers. We serve a prayer answering God. We serve a God that specializes in the impossible. We serve a God that know what we have need of before we even ask. But by faith, we still have to open our mouth and ask. So I'm encouraging you all today, Royal Priesthood family, to open your mouth and begin to decree and declare the word of the Lord because God is only obligated to fulfill his word so that your finances, you start decreeing and declare that you're the head and not the tail, that you are above and not beneath, that you are the lender and not the borrower. In the name of Jesus, you start prophetically decreeing and declaring Micah 2 and 13, 13 the breakers anointing upon your finances, the breakers anointing upon your health, the breakers anointing upon your family and your business. You start praying those type of scripture based prayers where the Lord is obligated to meet that because he's, he's a God that cannot 
not lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. If he said it and and you want to know how he said it, it's in his word. Therefore, he is obligated to fulfill that word. His word says in Philippians 4 and 19, glory be to God. I shall supply all, not some, but all of your needs according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. So if you standing in need today, then you go before him and you pray Philippians 4 and 19. You take the limitations off God and you don't walk around with your mouth closed. As the old folks said, closed mouth don't get fed. You open your mouth and you declare the word of the Lord today. So I look forward to these series on this week about prayer, about doing it according to the word of God, not according to my intellect, not according to my understanding, but according to the word of God. And I believe that we're going to have some testimonies of how God has answered our prayers because we begin to change our prayer language to his language. I want y'all to catch that. We begin to change our prayer language to his language and we begin to change our spirit to the spirit of the Lord. And what do you mean by changing your spirit? You're just allowing your spirit to align with the Holy Spirit. You're welcoming the Holy Spirit into your prayer time because you're partner with him. You're not trying to do this thing on your own. And I just know that I know that I know that God will answer you. So I want you all to be encouraged today. I pray favor, favor, favor be upon you because guess what? The favor of the Lord is in the word of God. So I'm praying the scripture base that his favor be upon you this day in Jesus name. And remember Jesus is Lord. God bless you.